Hello! I bought and received a lot of books at Yelk. I think I bought something like 25 books and I either won or was given four more were either in a raffle or a gift with purchase or whatever. So I'm going to show them all to you but because there's so many I'm going to try and get through this pretty quickly because I don't want you to have to be here all day. Even having said that I do suggest grabbing a cup of tea, cup of coffee, hot chocolate, smoothie, milkshake, whatever uh, and a snack because we could be here a while. Jumping right into it. So I have The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This is about a half fae who is dragged into the fae world and raised in the fae world but she is misunderstood because she's not fully fae and there's a cruel prince in it. That's all I know. Everybody raves about it. Been wanting to read it for ages. There it is. I should also mention that the reason I bought so many books is because the deals on books at Yalk were incredible. Most places it was like three books for £10 which is just mad and I didn't buy anything that I wasn't planning on buying eventually at some point so I've saved money. Anyway moving on. Jelly by Claire Rees. This is an early release book but it will be out soon anyway. I'll put on the screen when. This is about a group of people who are somehow stranded on the back of a giant killer jellyfish and land is in sight but they have no way to get there and we follow what they do in that situation. Then we have The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg. This is a Westworld meets Disneyland meets Merge Trial book. That's all I know. All I need to know. The Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagan. This has been out for quite a while. It is about... it's a pretty dark story actually. It's about girls who are selected by the king to be his courtesans and therefore there's quite a lot of sexual violence and sexual assault and rape in this book but there is some light perhaps at the end of the tunnel because there's a female female romance and I'm guessing that the characters can improve the situ the awful situation that they're in throughout the course of this book. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. Also I should probably point out the ones of these that I have signed. So Girls of Paper and Fire is signed and so is Jelly. Then we have The Lost Princess by Connie Glynn. This one is also signed. This is the final book I believe in the Rosewood Chronicles which follows Ellie and Lottie. Ellie is a princess undercover. Lottie is a wannabe princess. They're both at boarding school and so Lottie steps in as Ellie's body double I suppose. She pretends to be the princess so that Ellie will be safe basically. Then we have Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian which is a pretty standard fantasy storyline. Heir to the throne. The throne has been overthrown by an evil man. She had to watch her mother murdered. She's got to deal with that situation. Romanov by Nadine Brands. This follows an alternative Anastasia story where she is trying to take a, an ancient spell to safety but when she meets a boy who she starts to have feelings for she has to decide whether to release the spell or not. I just had to change my battery so if the angles change that's why, what's new. Then I won in a raffle American Royals by Catherine McGee and this is actually a proof copy. The book is being published on the 5th of September 2019 and in this it's a contemporary but in this fictional world there's a royal family in America and we follow all of the overly dramatic, by the sounds of it, politics that go on within the royal family and the people surrounding the American royal family. Next, The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. And 
And this has been on my TBR for ages, but I actually can't remember what it's about or why it's on my TBR. I just know that it was, which is why I picked it up. So, Alice has spent most of her life on the road, always one step ahead of the strange bad luck biting at her heels. But when Alice's grandmother, the reclusive author of a book of pitch dark fairy tales, dies alone on her isolated estate, the Hazelwood, Alice discovers how bad her luck can really get. Her own mother is stolen away by a figure who claims to come from the supernatural world, world where the fairy tales are set. Alice's only clue is the message left behind, stay away from the Hazelwood. To rescue her mother, Alice must venture first to the Hazelwood, then into the world where her grandmother's tales began. That's why it was on my TBR. That sounds great. Then we have Oh My Gods by Alexandra Shepard, which is also signed. This follows a protagonist who is half human, half god and she has to keep the god side of herself secret but she also has to go through high school like everybody else and dealing with that could be quite difficult I think and I'm interested to see just how difficult it is. Next we have Song of Sorrow which is also signed by Melinda Salisbury. This is book two in the State of Sorrow duology, State of Sorrow being the book that I am actually currently reading, and it follows a character named Sorrow who is running the country on behalf of her father who is suffering from depression and drug addiction following the death of his son and wife. And stuff happens that I don't want to go into because spoilers, but this is book two. Then we have Frankly in Love by David Yoon. This is a Yelk exclusive cover and an early edition of the book that I got free with purchase of another book, which I don't think I've shown you yet. Um, this one comes out on the 12th of September this year and it follows a character named Frank Lee and... <laughs> frankly, frankly in love. It's a bad joke. Anyway, um, Frank is Korean and so his parents want him to have an arranged marriage to a Korean girl but he wants to be with his white girlfriend and so he and this Korean girl that his parents have set him up with, she also wants to, to date a, a white boy. So they patch this plan to pretend that they're dating each other but actually they're dating the people that they want to date and I'm sure, as in most cases where it's a fake dating trope, they'll end up falling in love with each other. And that will be cute! Next up I got Ruin and Rising by Lee Bardugo. This is book three in the Grisha trilogy, the original Grisha trilogy. I can't tell you what this one is about, of course, but the first book is about Alina, who doesn't think that she has magical powers, but she discovers that she does, and she has to deal with that. It's a very tropey series. Lots of people complain about it. I've only read Shadow and Bone so far, but I really enjoyed it, and I'm glad that I've picked this one up at such a good price. Then I picked up a copy of Six of Crows, also by Lee Bardugo. This is the first book in the Six of Crows duology. I have no idea what it's about. I know that it's a heist story, but I don't I don't want to know anything else about it because I haven't finished reading the Grisha trilogy yet. So, fun fact, I thought that I picked up a copy of Six of Crows and a copy of Crooked Kingdom, but actually what I picked up was two copies of Six of Crows. So, that's not particularly helpful, is it? On the plus side, an extra birthday present from my sister. Then one of the books that I bought to get a copy of Frankly in Love was All These Beautiful Strangers and I'm gonna be real with you, this was a cover buy. It was two paperbacks for eight pounds or one for five pounds. I was going to get the other one that I'll show you in a minute. Anyway, this one just looked super pretty so I bought it. That's the way it goes sometimes, you know? So, once I thought my father had built the house on Langley Lake to keep everyone else out, but then my Uncle Hank found the photographs and I realised I had been wrong about everything. He had built it to keep us in. 
Charlie Calloway appears to have a life most people would kill for. A wealthy family, loyal friends, top grades and at an elite boarding school. When her school's super exclusive secret society extends a mysterious invitation, she is determined to get in, whatever the cost. But the secrets they keep are deeper and more dangerous than Charlie could ever have imagined and implicate her family in not just one terrible crime, but two. They could destroy her or give her the answer she's always craved. Who or what was behind her mother's dis disappearance 10 years ago? Hmm, that sounds pretty, pretty interesting. I thought it was going to be contemporary, but it sounds like it's more mystery thriller, which is something that I don't read a lot of. And so I'm glad I picked it up because it's something that I want to give more of a go. Then another book that I got free with purchase was What She Found in the Woods, which is also a proof copy of a book by Josephine Angelini, but I think that this is a leftover proof copy because it says that it came out on the 25th of July, which was last week. So I think that this is out already. It's a mystery book. I don't know anything about it. It literally was just given to me because I'd bought something else. So it just says on the back, I was going to burst out of my cocoon, a beautiful honest butterfly, but my truth turned out to be as toxic as my lies. And that's all it says, so I have no idea what this is about. If you've read it already or you've heard of it, let me know. Then one of the books that came in the Illumicrate box that you've already seen an unboxing of in my vlog, if you've not seen that I will link it, is Birthday by Meredith Russo, so I'm not going to talk about that because I already have. Then we have Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett, which is a proof copy. The book is actually coming out on the 31st of October 2019. I actually won this one in a raffle. On the front it says, Simone Garcia Hampton is HIV positive. I have no idea what this book is about because again, I just won it in a raffle, so I don't know. But it says, the words swirl in my head once, twice, three times, but they still don't register. I just hold the note in my shaking hands, blinking at the scribbled writing. I know you have HIV. You have until Thanksgiving to stop hanging out with Miles or everyone else will know too. So I feel like this is going to be a pretty hard hitting young adult contemporary book and I will definitely need to be in the mood to read this one because I think that it could be quite upsetting potentially. I mean it's quite clearly about bullying which can be a bit of a trigger for me so we'll see. Next up we have Sea Witch by Sarah Henning. This has been on my list to pick up for quite a while as well. It says on back, before the story of the Little Mermaid there were three friends, one magic, one royal and one already dead. So this is like an origin story for Ursula, I believe, which I, I really enjoy origin stories so I'm really interested to read this one. Then we have Alex in Wonderland by Simon Janes Green which is it's, it's an Alice in Wonderland retelling as the title would suggest but gender bent so we have a male protagonist and our male protagonist is actually also queer so that's a really interesting twist on things and the main plot of the story is that Alex gets a job at a fun fair called Wonderland and falls in love with a boy who is straight. And this story deals with that. It sounds super cute and fun and I'm really looking forward to it. Then we have We Set the Dark on Fire by Tello K. Magia. And this is another one of those that has been on my list for a long time but because it's been on my list so long, I can't actually remember what it's about. So, at the Medio School for Girls, distinguished young women are trained for one of two roles in their polarised society. Depending on her specialisation, a graduate will one day run her husband's household or raise his children, but both wives are promised a life of comfort and luxury, far from the frequent political uprisings of the lower class. Daniela Vargas is the school's top student, but her bright future depends upon no one discovering her darkest secret, that her pedigree 
degree is a lie. Her parents sacrificed everything to obtain forged identification papers so Danny could rise above her station. Now that her marriage to an important politico son is fast approaching, she must keep the truth hidden or be sent back to the fringes of society where famine and poverty rule supreme. On her graduation night, Danny seems to be in the clear despite the surprises that unfold, but nothing prepares her for all the difficult choices she must make, especially when she is asked to spy for a resistance group desperately fighting to bring equality to Medio. Will Danny give up everything she's strived for in pursuit of a free Medio and a chance at forbidden love? The first in a sizzling fantasy duology from debut author Taylor K. Magia. Which sounds super interesting and I've also just realised I forgot to show you that Alex in Wonderland is signed. Then I picked up Dry by Neil Schusterman, who is an author that I really enjoy, in case you didn't know. I loved Scythe and Thunderhead. I cannot wait for The Toll to come out. It's actually killing me a little bit that it's not out yet, but maybe my desperation for that book can be somewhat abated by having this one, which is another dystopian book, and in this one the human race has run out of drinking water, and apparently this one is a really scary and difficult read because of how just how true it could be this could be the future um just the same as scythe but this one is possibly even more close to home then we have we hunt the flame by hafsa faisal again another one that's been on my tbr so long i can't remember what it's about People lived because she killed. Zafira is the hunter. Forced to disguise herself as a man, she braves the cursed forest to feed her people. People died because he lived. Nasir is the infamous prince of death, assassinating those foolish enough to defy his autocratic father, the Sultan. Both are legends in the, kiln in the kingdom of Arawiya, but neither wants to be. Both are embarking on a quest to return magic to their kingdom, but as their journey unfolds, an ancient evil begins to stir. So I think that the reason I'm interested in this one is because it's a fairly standard fantasy premise, but with Arabian influences, which I like. I like to read fantasy with non-European influences, you know? Because there's a lot of that out there. And then we have a Red Sister by Mark Lawrence and all I really know about this is that there are badass fighting nuns in it. Done. An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir, another fantasy that is not European inspired and another fantasy that has been on my TBR so long that I can't remember what it's about. Vow your blood and body to the Empire, keep your heart for yourself. An orphan fighting for her family, a soldier searching for his freedom, a story burning to be told. Lyre is a scholar living under the iron-fisted rule of the Martial Empire. When her brother is arrested in the dead of night for treason and her loved ones slain, Lyre must go undercover as a slave at the Empire's greatest military academy in exchange for assistance from those who claim that they can save her brother from execution. The academy's finest soldier, Elias, is secretly its most unwilling, but before he can act on the desertion he plans in his heart, he's ordered to participate in a ruthless contest to choose the next martial emperor. When Lyre and Elias' paths collide, they will find their destinies are inescapably intertwined and their choices will rock the future of the very empire they fear. Sounds great, doesn't it? Then a book that I know nothing about at all because I took a punt on a surprise book. You basically just paid for a book that was wrapped up and you didn't know what was in it and I love that. I'm just, you know, I'm a bit weird. I like surprises but I don't like having to wait a long time for surprises. I like surprises with instant gratification basically. This is called Last Bus to Everland by Sophie Cameron and it says Everland, an addictive magical place where you do you. Brody has had enough of real life, enough of the bullies on his block, of being second best to his genius brother and of not fitting in at school or at home, until he meets Nico. Colourful, confident and flamboyant, Nico takes Brody to Everland, a diverse, magical place, a place where he can be himself, where there are no rules. Time doesn't pass and the party never ends. You could lose yourself there forever. Which just sounds kind of fun, doesn't it? Then the other book that was in the Illumicrate box is This Time Will Be Different by Misa Sugira. And again, I talked about it in the vlog, which I will link up above for you. So I'm not going to talk about it again here. Next up, we have The Binding by Bridget Collins. And again, 
this is a cover buy because the cover is stunning but just wait just just wait wait for it oh my gosh I couldn't I couldn't not buy it it's stunning just I mean how could I not how could I not also it's a book about books so imagine you could erase your grief imagine you could forget your pain imagine you could hide a secret forever Emmett Farmer is working in the fields when a letter arrives summoning him to begin an apprenticeship. He will work for a bookbinder, a vocation that arouses fear, superstition and prejudice, but one neither he nor his parents can afford to refuse. He will learn to handcraft beautiful volumes and within each he will capture something unique and extraordinary, a memory. If there's something you want to forget, he can help. If there's something you need to erase, he can assist. Your past will be stored safely in a book and you will never remember your secret, however terrible. In a vault under his mentor's workshop, row upon row of books and memories are meticulously stored and recorded. Then one day Emmett makes an astonishing discovery. One of them has his name on it. Which sounds great! And then finally we have the Starlight Watchmaker by Lauren James and I've left this one for last because I have actually already read it. So it's a short story so I can't tell you much about it, it's only 120 pages and the font is pretty big and spaced out so it's not a huge investment of time if you want to read this one and I really recommend it. It follows a main character named Hugo, who is an android. None of the characters are human. There are some really interesting characters in this one, and there's a bit of a mystery element to the story. And that's all I'm gonna say. So, those are all the books that I purchased or won or was given at Yelk. I had an amazing time. I can't wait to read all of these. I need to reorganize my bookshelf because I don't have space for them all. So there'll be a reorganization video coming your way soon. And let me know if you've got any books recently and what you're excited to read. If you went to Yelk, what did you get there? What's your most anticipated read from your recent haul? And that's it for this one. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more like this from me, then do think about hitting that subscribe button. And I hope to see you here again soon. Thanks. Bye.